Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today's topic is combinatorial proofs. This is the second type of proof we're seeing in this class after induction. And it's based on a very simple principle, which is that if a set has x elements and it also has y elements, then x must equal y. Now this seems intuitive, but it leads to a very useful proof strategy called counting in two ways, in which when we wanna show that two quantities are equal, when x equals y, to show that, we just have to find something that they both count, some set that has both x elements and y elements, and then you know that x equals y. So we're gonna see some examples of this in practice today. One example, one classical example of an equation that we've seen before is the fact that n choose k equals n choose n minus k. Now this can be interpreted in Pascal's triangle as the symmetry between the left and right uh, halves of Pascal's triangle. And we've seen an algebraic proof of this identity already. The algebraic proof says that n choose k can be written as n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And it doesn't matter what order we put those factorials on the bottom, we can just as easily write n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial, which is n choose n minus k for the same formula. And so there's an algebraic proof. We've just done some algebraic manipulation. But a combinatorial proof, on the other hand, in order to prove that these two quantities are equal, we want to show that they count the same thing. Well, let's start with something that n choose k counts. It counts the number of ways to choose a team of k students from a class of size n. But n choose n minus k is just the number of ways to choose who is not on the team, which is another way of counting how many ways you can choose who's on the team and who's not. And therefore, they count the same thing. And we can conclude that n choose k must equal n choose n minus k. Either you choose the people who are on the team or the people who are not on the team. It counts the same thing. So let's look at another example. Let's say we want to prove using a combinatorial proof that n choose 0 plus n choose 1 up to n choose n is 2 to the n. That's the sum of a row of Pascal's triangle. The nth row is 2 to the n. We've seen this identity before as well. And for the combinatorial proof, a lot of times in combinatorial proofs, I like to start on the easier looking side. What does 2 to the n count? It counts the number of binary sequences of length n. We've seen this, this formula before. And now we have to interpret how do we count the number of binary sequences in this way? Well, the pluses indicate casework. So let's look at them, the ones that have no zeros. There's n choose zero of them. And the ones that have exactly one zero, we know there's n choose one of those. And if they have two zeros, there's n choose two of those, and so on. And you add up over all possible zeros they have, um, because those are all the different cases. And so it's the sum n choose zero plus n choose one up to n choose n also counts the total number of binary sequences of length n. Let's look at another example. We've seen uh, the Gauss's lemma quite a lot using induction. We drew a picture. Um, this is the sum of the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is n times n plus 1 over 2, that triangular number. And let's do a combinatorial proof in this case. Remember, we used to look at triangular numbers in the context of complete graphs. So let's show that both sides count the number of edges in the complete graph kn plus 1. So remember, a complete graph is the graph on n plus 1 vertices where all the edges that can possibly be drawn are drawn. It's complete. There's, there's no more edges that you can draw. So for instance, here's the complete graph on five vertices. Every edge between every pair of vertices is drawn. So how many edges are there? Well, um, to interpret it on the right-hand side, an edge can be thought of as a choice of two distinct vertices out of n plus 1 that you connect. And so we could just do n plus 1 choose 2, which is n, n plus 1 factorial uh, divided by 2 factorial and n minus 1 factorial, and we get n plus 1 times n over 2. For the left-hand side, you could say, well, the first vertex has n edges coming out of it, and then another vertex, you add n plus 1 more to that, and so on for the sum n plus n plus n minus 1 down to 1. This is essentially how we derive this formula for the triangular numbers in the first place. Uh, but here's a, a combinatorial proof of that fact by counting a set in two different ways. Okay, so let's look at one more example now here. Let's prove that the sum of the power, two powers from 1 up to 2 to the n, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 up to 2 to the n, is 2 to the n plus 1, the next 2 power, minus 1. And we've seen this identity uh, proven by induction, but let's look at a combinatorial proof. So again, let's start on the easier looking side and come up with what set does that count? 
Well, one thing it counts is the number of binary sequences of length n plus one that have at least one zero. So the two to the n plus one is just binary sequences, but we're subtracting one. Let's subtract the all one sequence. So imagine we throw that one out and all the rest of the binary sequences we count. So there's usually more than one way of coming up with a combinatorial interpretation here, by the way, some set that it counts, but you just have to find one and then show that the other side of the equation counts it as well. Well, for, for this side, let's consider the position of the leftmost zero, since we know there's at least one zero. If it's at the start, there's two to the n ways of filling in the rest of the word. If it's in the second position, that must be a one, and then there's two to the n minus one ways of filling in the rest of the word. If it's in the third position, there's two to the n minus two possibilities, and so on. If the zero is all the way at the end, then actually we have to have all ones before that, since that's the leftmost zero. And so there's only one possibility in that case. And so we add up all these possibilities, two to the n plus two to the n minus one down to one, and that's that left-hand side. We know that that left-hand side also counts the binary sequences of length n plus one that have at least one zero. Now, if you get stuck on these things, if you're not sure how to interpret, say, a summation, um, there's, a, there's sort of a different method. And to make this proof more clear, let's draw out the visual for the very simple case of n equals three here. So one plus two plus four plus eight, just up to two to the third. And we wanna show that it's 16 minus one with a combinatorial proof. So here on the right-hand side, this right-hand column is the set that in the previous slide we were counting in two ways. So it's, the, it's all of the binary sequences of ones and zeros of length four besides one, 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 one. We're deleting that one down at the bottom. So there's 15 of those. And we want to understand why we can count them as one plus two plus four plus eight. Well, the first eight are the ones that start with zero. So there's the zero in the first position. And we can think of them as corresponding to what their next three numbers are. And I'm just writing them over here without that zero, just delete that zero. And then if we delete the one and zero from the ones that start with one zero, um, then we get all the possible length two sequences, which there's four of them. And then we uh, look at the ones where the first zero is in the third position, one, one, zero, followed by one of these two strings. And then, um, and then the last one, of course, is the empty string uh, after one, 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 zero. And so there's a way of, of visually seeing what exactly we did here to, to show that the 16 minus one can be represented as uh, eight plus four plus two plus one based on these different groups. Now these arrows indicate what's, what's called you know, this matching process, zero, zero, zero goes to this one and so on. The, the matching that we see here, this is called a bijection between two sets. So the, the things on the left are more obviously counted by the left-hand side and the things on the right were more obviously counted by the right-hand side. And we wanna match them up. So this leads us to another method for doing combinatorial proofs, which is called bijective proofs. So the principle now is a little bit more complicated than the original counting in two ways principle we said, which is that if a set A has X elements and a different set B has Y elements, and there's a bijection between A and B, then X equals Y. So bijections are defined more formally in the, in the book, but for now, let's just think of a bijection as a one-to-one -one and onto correspondence between two sets A and B, meaning a perfect matching between the elements of A and the elements of B. There can't be any elements of B left over. You can't have two of them corresponding to the same one. It's just some one-to-one -one correspondence um, that, that hits every element of B. So if you have a bijection between two sets, that means they have the same number of elements because you match them. And this is a very powerful tool in counting and proving that things are equal. Here's an example of bijection we've sort of seen, and now let's put it in bijective terms. Prove that the number of up and right lattice paths from zero comma zero to a comma b is a plus b choose a. So a lattice path consists of going either up by one or over by one at every step. And the proof here is we can form a bijection between the lattice paths and something we know is counted by a plus b choose a, which is sequences consisting of a symbols R and B U's. R means right and B means up. So here's an example of this bijection at work. We're going to match this lattice path with the uh, sequence up, right, up, right, right, up, right, right, because that's what this does. Up, right, up, right, right, up, right, right. And so that's, the, that's an example of, of two elements that are matched in our bijection. You can imagine all the lattice paths being matched with all of these possible sequences. We know that these sequences have length A plus B because they have A ups and B rights, uh, A rights and B ups rather. 
because it's a comma b. And uh, the number of those is a plus b, choose a then, because we're choosing where the u's can go. So the total length here is a plus b, there's a plus b choose a sequences, and that completes the proof. Okay, so now you try, uh, put together what we've learned so far, and uh, try to prove this equation, that n choose zero plus two times n choose one plus four times n choose two up to two to the n times n choose n equals three to the n. There are many ways to do this. You can approach it by induction. You can actually use the binomial theorem and plug various things in to prove this. But what we're looking for here is a combinatorial proof. Try to interpret the three to the n as counting something and then break it into cases um, by counting things in, in these groups that correspond to these smaller numbers. Okay, so that's all for today and we'll see you next time.